hello again and welcome back on my channel dear friends from all over the world today we'll continue with the second episode of this extraordinarily important mini-series which brings a wonderful revelation about the new man and about the way he sees and lives his life all of which are throwing away all the thousands of years dusty traditions and customs all this was transmitted to us in the 70s by those who created us in their own image and likeness as it is literally written in the Bible. And no, it's not about a supernatural God, but it's about people like us who come from a much more advanced world, about 25,000 years more advanced than our own world. And now, finally, the right time has come for people to discover and especially to understand all these huge revelations which can be downloaded for free and in full from the link provided in the description. But let's continue now with the, what we started in the first episode, the next point being the key number five, namely society and government. It is a lot of work again for us because we have some we have some outdated structures and leadership principles totally unadapted to the time we are living in. This key is presented to us like this. Just as the human body has a brain, it is essential that society has a government that makes decisions. So you will not you'll do everything you can to establish a government that practices geniocracy that puts that puts intelligence in power. You will also participate in the creation of a world party that will support humanitarianism and geniocracy as described in the first part of the Elohim's message and you will support its candidates. Only through geniocracy can humanity fully pass into the golden age. Total democracy is not good. A body in which all cells are commanding cannot survive. Only intelligent people should be allowed to make decisions that involve humanity. That, that's why you will refuse to vote unless a candidate representing geniocracy and humanitarianism is present in the elections. Neither universal elections nor public opinion polls are valid ways to govern the world. To govern means to foresee, not to follow the reactions of a population like sheep, among which only a small number are awake enough to guide humanity. <coughs> Since there are very few awakened people, if we, we base our decisions on universal elections or opinion pools, decisions become the choice of the majority and therefore of those who are not awakened. Such people respond to their interests of their immediate reward or as a result of instinctive reactions that are unconsciously locked in the strike in the straight jackets of obscurantist conditioning. Only geniocracy, which is a selective democracy, is meritory. As stated in the first part of this message from the Elohim, only people whose net intelligence level is 50% above average should be elig eligible to participate in the elections and only those whose intelligence level is 10% above average should be eligible to vote. Scientists are already developing tests that measure net intelligence. Use their advice and act in such a way that the most precious minerals of humanity, which are the exceptionally gifted children, can receive an education close to their genius since normal education is intended only for children of average intelligence. 
The factor that shows intelligence is not the number of diplomas that someone has obtained, since they have more to do with the uninteresting faculty of memory which machines can easily replace. Intelligence in its natural state is the quality that can make farmers and workers much smarter than engineers or teachers. This can be called common sense as well as creative genius because most inventions are nothing more than a matter of common sense. As has already been said, to govern means to anticipate, and all the great problems facing mankind prove that past governments had no anticipation and were therefore incompetent governments. Human laws are indispensable and you'll obey them, while you seek to change those that are incorrect or outdated. However, do not hesitate to prefer the laws of our creators to the human ones, because even human judges will one day be judged by our creators. Police will be essential until society discovers medical methods to eradicate violence and prevent criminals or those who attack the freedom of others from acting out their antisocial impulses. Unlike soldiers who are the guardians of war, police officers are the guardians of freedom, freedom and will be indispensable until science solves this problem. In countries where there is compulsory military service, you'll refuse to participate. You'll instead ask for the status of conscientious objector, which will allow you to serve in a division that does not carry weapons, as it is your right if your religious or philosophical beliefs forbid you to kill your fellow human beings. This is the case for those who believe in Elohim, our creators, and who want to follow the guidelines of the Guide of Guides of the Raelian movement, which is Rael Maitreya. Contrary to many young people's beliefs, con conscientious objectors are not sent to prison, but instead serve some civilian roles or in an unarmed division for a period that is twice the normal length of military service. It is better to spend two years working in an office than to be trained for a year in techniques that will allow you to kill others. Military service must be eliminated immediately from all over the world. All professional soldiers must be transformed into guardians of world peace, working for freedom and human rights. The only government system that is viable is geniocracy, applying humanitarianism as well. Capitalism is a mistake because it subjugates people to money, some benefiting on the backs of others. Commun communism is also wrong since it, place, it places greater importance on e equality than on freedom. There must be equality between people at the beginning, at birth, but not after that. Although everyone has the right to have enough resources to live this decently, those who do more for other human beings have the right to receive more than those who do nothing for the community. This is clearly a temporary rule until the robots will be able to do all the work. Then, after the total abolition of money, all people will be able to devote themsel themselves exclusively to their fulfillment. At the same time, it is a shame that while some people are starving, others are throwing away food to prevent prices collapsing. Instead of throwing away this food, they should give it do to those who have nothing to eat. Work should not be considered holy. Everyone has the right to live comfortably even if he does not work and must achieve and prosper in any field that attracts him. If people are organized, 
it won't take them long to mechanize and automate all the indispensable work. Then everyone will be able to evolve freely and achieve a sense of accomplishment. If all people put their minds together in just a few years, the freedom to stop working will be achieved. What is required is a wonderful explosion of enthusiasm and solidarity at work for the liberation of humanity from material constraints. All the technical and scientific resources of humanity should be made common reserves and all those working in these fields should put their minds together to fight for the welfare of the whole community and not for profit interests. We, you have computers and electronic equipment that can easily replace the power of your hand. Put them all to work so that this technology can truly work for the benefit of mankind. In a few years you can build a completely different world. You have entered the golden age. Do your best to create biological robots that will save you from all the menial labor and allow you to blossom and fulfill yourselves. Urban development must be reconsidered as written in the first part of this message from the Elohim. You have to build very tall communal buildings located in open provinces so that individual houses do not devour nature. Never forget that if everyone had their own yard, there will be no more rural areas. These common buildings must be cities that are equipped with everything people need and can comfortably accommodate about 50,000 inhabitants each. Until the day you become creators and you can recreate it, you must respect nature. By respecting nature, you respect those who created it, your parents, the Elohim. You'll never make animals suffer. You'll be able to kill them to eat their flesh, but do this without them suffering. As has been indicated, death is nothing, suffering is terrible, and you must avoid making animals suffer, and you must prevent them the suffering of man. All the less, don't eat too much meat and you'll feel better that way. You can live with everything the, the earth has to offer. You do not have to follow a special diet. You can eat meat, vegetables, fruits and other plants. It is foolish to follow a vegetarian diet under the pretext that you do not want to live on the meat of other creatures. Plants are alive just like you and they suffer just like you. So you must not cause suffering to plants that are alive just as you are. Don't get intoxicated by alcohol. You can drink a little wine while eating wine that exists on earth, earth for that. But it but never intoxicate yourself. You can drink alcohol in exceptional cases, but in small quantities and accompanied by solid food so that you never get drunk. He who is drunk is no longer able to be in harmony with infinity or to control himself. This is something terrible in the eyes of our creators. You will not smoke because the human body was not, was not made to inhalate smoke. It has a terrible effect on the body and makes it difficult to achieve and harmonize with infinity. You will not take drugs. You will not take drugs in any way because the awakened mind does not need anything from outside to approach infinity. It is an abomination in the eyes of creators for people to believe that they need to use drugs to improve. And I end, and I end quote. And we continue now with key number six, which is meditation and prayer. 
You must meditate at least once a day, locating yourself in relation to infinity, in relation to Elohim, to society and to yourself. You must meditate in the morning on the awakening so that your whole being becomes fully aware of infinity and in this way you will be in the possession of all your faculties. You need to meditate before any meal so that every part of your body eats what you eat and when you eat think about what you do. Your meditation should not be an empty one, but rather a sensual one. You let yourself be swallowed by peace and harmony until it becomes a delicious pleasure. It is better not to meditate at all than to meditate without wanting to do so. Do not Pause meditation on your children or family, but explain to them the pleasure it gives and the feeling of well-being it brings and if they feel that they want to meditate, try to teach them what you know. Think intensely about the Elohim, our creators, at least once a day and try to contact them telepathically. In this way you will discover the original meaning of prayer. If you do not know how to do it, you can be inspired by the Lord's Prayer, words that are perfectly appropriate for communication with our Creators. At least once a week, take part in a telepathic communication with the Elohim in the community along with other people in your area who believe in them. If possible, you should be accompanied by a guide. Do your best to meet every year with all those who believe in Elohim and in the message they gave to the last of the prophets. Key number 7. The, the arts. Another point that shows us how, how little we invest now in a very important component of individual awakening and development. If, and I quote, do your best to encourage artists and help your child if he or she is attracted to the arts. Art is one of the things that allows you to best harmonize with infinity. Consider every natural thing an art and every art a natural thing. Surround yourself with artistic things, whatever they appeal to your eyes, your sense of touch, smell or taste. Everything that stimulates the senses is artistic. It is more than just music, painting, sculpture and all the officially recognized arts. Gastronomy is also an art, as well as per perfume making, since both are related to the senses. Standing above all, finally, love is an art. All the arts make us make us be in harmony and therefore allow those who appreciate it to be taken over by something harmonious. Li literature is especially important because it helps to open people's mind by showing to them new horizons. But literature for the sake of literature is just prattle. What counts is not the writing of beautiful sent sentences, but the transmission of new ideas to others through reading. Audiovisual means are even more important because they awaken our visual and auditory senses at the same time. It can replace the literature well because they are more complete. In the meantime, literature is useful for the time being. This key ends here and we continue with the last key for today, the key number 8, which is sensual meditation. If you want to reach a higher level of harmony with infinity, arrange a place for sensual meditation for yourself. Place in it works of art, paintings, tapestries, pastors, sculptures, drawings, photographs 
or anything else that represents love, infinity or sensuality for the enjoyment of your eyes. Arrange a corner where you can sit close to the ground on pillows for example or sit down on a couch or fur for the pleasure of touching it. Evaporate pleasant scents and oils to please your nose. Have a tape recorded with music pleasing to your ears. Have trays and bottles filled with food and drink pleasing to your mouth and invite one or more people you love who share your tastes and, which, and with whom you feel at ease and in harmony. Then feed your senses together and open your bodies in order to open your minds in love and fraternity. If someone is physically attracted to you and you feel that this is recipro reciprocal, invite the person to this place. You can reach a sublime state of harmony together which allows you to feel infinity by satisfying your five senses. To this state will be added the synthesis of synthesis of all these pleasures, the physical union in total harmony and in the illumination of the act of love. Of course, spiritual harmony must come first. In other words, there must be a mutual attraction between the minds and bodies of the individuals in the way they approach and respect each other. But the spiritual love is always brought to a sublime state by a realized physical love. To love means to give something and not expect anything in return. If you love a person, you have to give yourself entirely to that person if he or she wants it. Never be jealous because jealousy is the opposite emotion of love. When you love someone, you have to look for his or her happiness first and foremost and in every way. To love is to seek the happiness of others and not, not your own. If the person you love is attracted to someone else, don't be jealous. On the contrary, be happy that she is happy even if the, if is not because of you. Love also the person who, like you, want to bring happiness to the person you love and who also has the same goal as you. Jealousy is the fear that someone else might make the person you love happier than you and that you might lo lose the person you love. But instead of being jealous, we should try our best to make the person we love happy and if someone else does it better we should be happy about it. What matters is not for the loved one to be happy because of us but simply to be happy whoever is responsible for it. So if this person you love is happy with someone else rejoice in this happiness. You'll recognize the person who loves you if he or she does not oppose your happiness with another person. It is your duty to love the person who loves you so much and give him or her your happiness as well. In this direction goes the path to universal love. Rejoice in the happiness of others so that they may rejoice in yours. Dear people, if you liked this episode and want to see the next ones, you can like and share this video or say your opinions in the comment section and I invite you to subscribe to the channel where I post about every week and on the screen you should, able, you should be able to see right now a very interesting playlist which I invite you to take a look at if you want to find out more. And of course we can communicate in private if you wish, my contact details being provided in the description. I kiss you all and see you in the next video.